1980 was, a, I suppose, the turning point of, of my career as far as becoming a full-time professional race car driver. Well, the, the XD was uh, when I first saw it racing for the first time in 1980. At, uh, I sat down in front of the TV and watched the telecast from Simmons Plains in Tasmania. Now, these things have got to be half a right. And I knew what they had done with the rules, they'd allow all the, uh, the parts from the previous cars, the two doors, to be transferred into these models. And I think that gave the Ford a bit of an advantage in, in a few ways, even though it was a heavier motor car, it still had a bigger engine. And I thought, well gee, you know, there's a chance here, if we do this right, we could sort of start to win races. And, and so I discussed it with my wife and uh, we stuck everything we had into into putting this deal together and it was a very successful motor car it went out there and, and really showed the way and, and it had been a long time since uh, Ford had really been at the forefront probably 1977 would have been the, the last time when Moffat had the uh, the one two at Bathurst and since then you know there was a fair sort of a drought and the Ford fans were really itching to have someone up there and, and I just happened to be the lucky one that was there at the time. Like a lot of people, my first memory of Dick is actually when he hit the rock in 1980 at Bathurst. But I saw this uh, incredible sort of uh, emotional public event unfold and that was the beginning of the Dick Johnson legend. As I remember it, uh, he was leading the race uh, comfortably and then I can only assume it was a GM spectator rolled a rock on the track and Dick hit the famous rock. Well, I suppose you could experience going from the highest high, like here we were leading the greatest race of all time, something we'd never even come close to before. So we're going to the absolute depths of depression, like, you know, it's pretty hard to explain actually. Just to tore everybody guts out. I can honestly say that I will never ever race at Bathurst again until such time as they have a 20 foot high wire fence. The entire spectator areas are completely wired off from the track because that is just so dangerous. I, I just couldn't believe my bloody eyes with these galoots up there that just throw boulders like it was enormous. Is anything like that ever happened in racing before? Never, because you know this was our big shot. We had stuck every single bulb into this. Dick, the switchboards at all the seven stations across Australia are jammed of people who uh, are so upset about what has happened. Uh, and they, believe it or not, are ringing and just genuinely pledging money to help you. Now this has happened in the last half hour. Uh, everyone knows what has happened to you. We want you to understand that everyone admires what you've done so far and your qualifying efforts yesterday and also this morning in leading the race. And we'll keep you informed. I know the viewers across Australia are absolutely shattered by what has happened, the same as you are shattered. We all feel the same. Probably not a motor racing supporter who threw that. Probably some idiot that just came in to cause a disturbance. So take time out. We'll keep you informed what happens, Dick. Dick Thank I you very really much, Mike. I think Dick was really affected by it in, in the sense that he found that there were a great number of battlers out there that, that identified with him and that contributed their own money. And I don't, don't think until then he really uh, realised how emotionally involved people get in motorsport. He always felt that, but it was the fans that probably surprised him. And uh, Edsel saw it on TV and uh, called and said, I think we ought to support it. So every dollar that goes to the team from viewers of Channel 7 who send something along to you, care of ATN Channel 7 in Sydney, that money will be matched dollar for dollar 
by Edsel Ford on behalf of the Ford Motor Company. Well, Mike, that to me is unbelievable because uh, I don't know exactly what to say because uh, something like this has never happened to me before. And I thought at the time, my God, what a, what a risk. If, uh, if Dick ends up with a whole heap of money, we're going to give him the whole marketing budget uh, for Ford Motor Company. But I would sincerely like to thank all those people and Edsel Ford for his true support because uh, I know that with our car, the Ford Falcon, the way it was, it was more than capable of winning this race and doing it easy because believe me, the car was superb and I owe just so much to those boys who have put so much time into it. Thank you very much, Mike. It was obviously a very good investment because uh, the following year, uh, in 81, uh, Dick went back and won. But to win back that year um, wouldn't it, would not have given us the same amount of exposure as what the um, fellas did with the rock. And I think it would be a happy day for all our viewers throughout Queensland with Dick Johnson, the man from Prudential. We built this new car with um, the funds that had been donated to us by all these people. And I'll never forget the first race that was in Tasmania at Simmons Plains. And uh, we turned up with this new car and it was the first three car championship win I'd ever had. Australian Touring Car Championship in 1981 and we're in the last round of the championship is one, one point the difference between Brock and himself going into the final round. He's probably referring to a race at Lakeside where it came down to the wire. It was a real buzz because it was a wheel-to-wheel a -wheel duel for the entire race from the start, the time the flag dropped, to the time the checker flag came down. I think Dick probably got the start and I just hung into his bumper bar. And <laughs> try as I might, I couldn't get by. And unfortunately, we came out on top and we won the championship, so that was a real good feeling. It was one of those things where uh, it was a turning point in Dick's life. Uh, it was a point where uh, all of a sudden, I suppose, he had the self-confidence and self-belief that he could do it. And he deserved to be up the front uh, flying the Ford flag. He was well and truly the guy that was out there representing the hopes of the, uh, the Blue Oval Brigade. And, uh, that race was one of those turning points, one of those hallmark races that uh, we... I, I can remember having a couple like that in my life too.